Hello and welcome. My name is Tony Knight, and in this video guide, I'm going to show you everything that you need to know about using Chroma Tag for the Mac. Before we get started, I want to talk a little bit about photo metadata, just to give us a little context as we get started using Chroma Tag. Now I have about 45,000 images on my computer, and I can use photo metadata to find exactly the photo that I'm looking for. And let me give you an example. So a few years ago, I took my daughter and I to New York City, and we went to a subway station, and this is the first time she saw a subway rat. I want to find just that photo. So I'm going to open up Spotlight, and I'm going to type in subway rat, and I'm going to find exactly that photo out of 45,000. And the reason I can do that is because this image is tagged with information that is indexed by the operating system. So there's a caption here that, that describes what was going on. There's GPS information that is specific to that exact point in time. And there's also information showing me exactly when this photo was taken. Let me give you one more example. So a few years ago, I took my oldest daughter, Izzy, to Paris. And here are some photos from that trip. The reason I was able to find it so quickly is I have my photos labeled by uh, people, dates, and locations. So I just type in Izzy, Paris, and there we are. And this is her looking down at the Gare du Nord train station. Now, years later, I took my youngest daughter to this exact same spot. Now, if I want to find those photos, I just type in Lucia. And there she is looking down at this exact same spot. So photo metadata can help me find any photo that I have if I label them with the date, the location, and the people that are in them. And Chroma Tag can help you put those exact things inside every one of your photos. Let's find out how. Before we start tagging, there's a few things that we need to do to set up the app for the first time. Let's take a look at what those are. I'm going to walk you through the interface. We're going to set some preferences, and then we're going to add relationship names and custom locations. And these are things that if you do them one time, they're going to save you a lot of time when you start tagging images. So the way to set application preferences is to click on this gear icon at the top of the toolbar. That's going to reveal three different preferences that you can set. The first is how we handle files. Now I should mention that when you write metadata to an image file, what you're actually doing is you're recreating the file. Now, in theory, if something happens while we're writing that file, for example, if the drive gets dismounted or if the power goes out, that image file might be corrupted. This is very, very rare, but as a way to handle this as, as a precaution, what we can do is we can make a backup of the original file before we write the new metadata. The way this works is if you have this checked, then we will take the original file and copy it to your documents folder under the chroma tag folder, and then we will write the new metadata to the file. So that's basically an insurance policy. The second is how we handle file names. Now, a lot of the files that we download off of the internet have this kind of alphanumeric gibberish to them, and they don't have any relationship to the file. And so if you check use date format, then what we will do is when we write the metadata to the new file, we'll use a date format as the basis for the file name. So here's a good example of it. It will set the year, the month, and then the date, and then a serial number to keep the files unique, followed by the extension. So this is a good way to keep all of your image files basically having the same type of date format. Finally, this last setting allows you to filter out certain kinds of images that you don't want to appear in the gallery. So by default, Chroma Tag can write metadata to digital negative files, JPEGs, PNG files, and TIFFs. But let's say, for example, you've got a folder full of images and you don't want to see the PNG files. Well, you can check this off and we will filter those out and you won't see them in the gallery. Now, when you're done making your application settings, make sure to click on the Save button and those settings will be stored. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some relationships to our relationship manager. Now, natural language tagging allows you to naturally describe what's going on in a photo, and Chroma Tag will extract from that description things like the date, the location, and the people that are in the photos. Now, this wouldn't be as natural if you described a photo the way you wanted to, and then when you wanted to tag the people, you would have to say their full names. It would be much more natural to be able to use words like mom or dad or uncle or cousin during your description and then have Chroma Tag be able to figure out who you were talking about and then add their full names into the keyword metadata. And that's precisely what the relationship manager does. Let's take a look at how that works. 
So the way to get to the relationship manager is to click onto this icon that has the three faces on it. What that's going to do is that's going to open up this text field. And this text field basically is how I built up my relationship manager. And it's a very simple syntax. So let's take a look at how you would define a single relationship. Now in the top example, I'm going to use I and me as the first example because I'm going to be in a lot of my photos. So whenever I say this is my dad and I or this is me at the wherever, I want those images to be tagged with my full name. And here's that syntax. I put the word I followed by a comma followed by the word me followed by an equal sign, and then finally my full name. Now I used two nouns on this side of the equation, but I could have used as many as I wanted as long as they were separated by a comma. The second example is another good one. I might use the word dad or father to describe my dad, and I would write it this way and then followed by my father's name. Now there are times when you have plural relationships. For example, sisters, kids, grandparents, uh, anything like that you would essentially define the noun first, grandparents, which is plural, followed by an equal sign, followed by the names that you want associated with them. Now, make sure that you put the first name in and then you put a comma and then a second name and you can keep going as long as they're separated by a commas. One other thing, make sure that you always add a carriage return between lines. Finally, you're going to have duplicate relationships. For example, you're going to have multiple uncles or multiple cousins. And the way we handle that is pretty simple. You just write the multiple relationships out as you would with a single relationship. So I might have two uncles. I'll say uncle equals Jack Knight. And then I'll have another uncle, Roger Knight. And then when you go to describe your photo, make sure that if you have a duplicate, you'll say Uncle Jack if you want that to be used or Uncle Roger if you want that to be used. So in those particular situations, uh, when you have duplicates, we use the next word basically to be the thing that helps us resolve conflicts. Once you've added all your relationships to this list, make sure you hit the save button to register them with the application. Now if you've made a mistake and you don't want to save, you can click back on this icon and that's the same as a cancel. The next thing we're going to do is add people's names that can be used to tag people that are in our photos. And the way we get to that is by clicking onto the single person icon in the toolbar. Now this is a text field just like the relationship manager was. And so I can basically type a carriage return and add a name down here at the bottom. And I can add as many as I want. And all of the names that are on this list will be available to me for tagging photos. And the way I can access them is down here in this keywords panel. I can tag anybody in my photos just by typing a few letters of their names and it will autofill for me. Now if you think that most of the people that you're going to tag in your photos already exist in your Max contacts, you can simply check this checkbox here in this panel and it will import all the people from your contacts and make them available for tagging. When you're done, make sure to tap on the Save button and that will bring all those names into Chroma Tag. If you want to cancel, just click on this icon again and it won't save anything that you did. But in this case, I'm just going to hit Save. The last little bit of setup we're going to do is we're going to add some custom places into Chroma Tag. And what this will do is it will allow us to tag photos to very, very precise locations. Let me show you how that's done. The way that I get to the custom places presets is to tap onto this map pen icon, which is going to open up this interface. Now this interface allows me to enter into a search box, a location any location. I can type in an address. I can type in a famous place. In this particular example, I'm going to type in the name of my elementary school that I went to when I was a kid, which is not an elementary. And I'm going to hit the enter key and the map is going to try to take me to where it thinks that location is. And this is exactly right. This is the elementary school that I went to in San Jose. And this is something that I am going to use a lot when I'm tagging my photos. So if this looks good, I'm going to tap onto this button that says apply and that's going to add not an elementary school to my custom presets list. And that includes the GPS coordinates, the actual address, the city, the state, the zip code, and in fact, the country. And this is going to allow me to then use a, a preset anytime I have photos that are in that school. Now I'm going to give you one more tip when you do this, which is this name that is right to the left of this equal sign can also be used as the, the location name and a very specific piece of metadata will be applied. So what I can do is I can actually edit this to make it look exactly as I want it to appear in the location metadata field. So I want this to be not an elementary school. 
and I'm just going to go ahead and save it just like that. And then the benefit that I get from doing this is if I tag any photos in that school, I can then also globally search for not an elementary school and I'll find all those photos because that was saved in the location metadata field. So if this looks good, I'm going to go ahead and hit save and that will store my custom places presets. And then whenever I want to tag photos of that school, I can go in over here to this map pen and then click on it and then go down here and apply not an elementary school to those photos. Before we get started, I want to show you how to turn on and configure the voice recognition system that's built into Mac OS X that we'll be using with Chromatag. So I'm going to go to my system preferences and then tap on the keyboard control. And then right here in the last tab, it says dictation. And what I want to do is make sure that the dictation is turned on. And then over here to my left, I have a choice of microphones that I can use. And I can use my internal microphone, the display audio, but I'm using an external microphone, so I'm just going to select that. Then the shortcut that invokes the voice recognition system can be configured here. Now the default is to use the function key twice, which is what I like to do, and I'm going to leave it there. But you can actually go in here and customize that if you want. Finally, the last thing we'll talk about is this option here called Use Enhanced Dictation, and I'm going to tell you why I have that turned off. So here's my contacts, and I've added two names of two Premier League football players, and you know, I read online that these were the two hardest names to say, so I've added them to my contact names. And I'm going to go in here and just use these, this text field to invoke the speech recognition and just try to say their names and see what comes out. So let me go ahead and do that. Toby Alderweild and Sieb Dykstra. Okay, so it recognized their names pretty well, even though I'm pretty sure I didn't say them right. Um, if I turn this on, though, however, Let's see what happens. Toby Alderweild and Sieb Dykstra. Ah, it didn't do such a great job, did it? Let's try it one more time. Toby Alderweild and Sieb Dykstra. There you go. So, Leaving this turned off will give you much better name recognition when you use Chroma Tag. Now, with all that setup complete, we're ready to tag some images. Now, when I was a kid in San Jose, there was this amazing Old West amusement park called Frontier Village, and everyone I knew loved the place. Unfortunately, it met with a wrecking ball when I was 10, but people still talk about it and remember it today. I'm part of this Facebook group, and I've downloaded some images right to my hard drive, that I can then tag and add historical value to. These images all have weird alphanumeric names and have no metadata in them, but we're going to take care of them with Chromatag. So now it's time to import these images into Chromatag. And I can do that simply by dragging and dropping onto my folder list here. There's another method that I can use to import images, and that's to use the plus bar down here at the bottom. So when I click onto this folder list, I can see all the images that I downloaded from Facebook, and they appear slightly dim. Once I select them, they brighten up, and that tells me that that image is ready to be tagged. Now I can do a variety of different ways of selecting the images. I can drag all the way across and grab all the images at once. I can click onto one and then hold my shift key down, and then push my left or right arrow to select a group of them, or I can hold my command key down and then select just the ones that I want in any particular order, just like that. And then over here, it'll show me how many images I've selected. There's also a slider that will allow me to grow or shrink my thumbnail sizes. If you select an image and tap on the space bar, you'll see a full screen image. And I can use my left and right key to see these images in a larger size. One more thing. When I select an image, if I look over to the inspector, I can see if that image already has any existing metadata. Now these images were taken from Facebook. They don't really have any useful metadata in them, but if they did, they would show up here in black. 
Now, what I want to do now is I want to tag a certain group of photos. Now, the Frontier Village Amusement Park had this really nice main street and it had all these shops and restaurants and buildings. And so what I want to do is I want to select just those images. So I want to go down here and find images that were taken along that main street. And there's the old schoolhouse and there's the general store. I'll take the marshal's office and take grab these two and I'll take the map as well. So I've got a selection of images now and I'm ready to tag. So I'm going to be using natural language tagging in this case where I'm going to give a description of what these images are and then chroma tag will automatically look for things for me. I'm simply going to tap onto this field and then double tap my function key to start the voice recognition process. These are buildings along Main Street at the Frontier Village Amusement Park in San Jose, California, period. These photos were taken in the summer of 1979, period. Okay, so that's a pretty good voice recognition. I will now just kind of scan along to see if there's any mistakes that I need to correct. And that looks about right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap onto this recognize button which allows Chromatag to do the natural language parsing. And we're going to look inside this description for things like places and people's names and dates. So I tap on here. I'll see that it found, you know, the summer of 1979. It found San Jose. It didn't find any people because it didn't name any people. And if I find that this is a good analysis of what was going on, I just tap apply. And then I'll see that description get embedded into the metadata. It's in blue now, which means it hasn't been written. I can still make some changes to it. I can look here in the map and I can see that while it didn't find Frontier Village, and the reason for that is because Frontier Village doesn't exist anymore, it did center this in the middle of San Jose. I'm going to refine this in just a moment, but then it added more of my metadata down here below. So I want a precise location for where Frontier Village was. And in this particular case, I can, I've already added a custom place and I can just go down here on the list and select it. And then that shows me where Frontier Village used to be. That looks good. Now my metadata all looks great. I can just tap save and it will tag those images. Now, did you notice that after it tagged those images, they disappeared from this list? Now there's a good reason for doing that. While you're tagging a folder full of images, you might want to know which ones you've tagged and which ones you haven't tagged. And so what Chroma Tag does is it automatically hides images once you've tagged them with metadata. Now the images haven't gone anywhere. This is just a visual way of showing you which images you need to, to tag and which ones you've already tagged. Now if you want to turn that feature off and go back and look at all your images again, just click on this little icon that looks like an eye. Now the way that this works is it's based on the tagging session. So once you launch the application that starts the session and Chromatag keeps track of all the images that it has already tagged during that session and it hides them for you. So this little button is a way of hiding and unhiding images that you've already tagged. Now if I turn this back on so I can see everything, I can click onto an image and I can see that these images now have metadata in them. So here's the description, here's my location information, here's my date information. Because these are in black, that means the metadata has already been embedded in them. I can also right click onto this image and then open it up in my default viewer or I can show the image in the finder. But I'm going to go ahead and just open this now in the preview application and you can see that this metadata is now being read by the Finder application. And you can see that my GPS coordinates are right on that spot. I've got IPTC uh, information embedded into the image that, dis that includes my description and the date and exactly where it was. So now my metadata has been written down to those images. So I want to do another example of natural language tagging because the last example didn't really use the Relationship Manager much. So I'm going to import another folder full of images and these are childhood images and I want to go to this image right here and give it a description. This is my dad and I at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk in the spring of 1974 with Ruth Ann Stepakowski. So I'm going to tap on my recognize button and from this description the natural language tagging engine was able to uh, create a date for it, an exact location, and then find the people that we talked about uh, because I've already 
put in the relationship manager uh, myself and my father, and Ruth Ann Stepikowski is in my contact, so I was able to recognize that. I'm just going to add one period right here at the end just to make it look nice. And then once I'm done, I'm just going to tap on the apply button and that will transfer everything over into the inspector. And this all looks good. So I'm going to save it. And when I look at it again, I can see that all of that metadata has been written into the image. And that really is the beauty of natural language tagging, being able to create multiple pieces of information just based on the description. So natural language tagging is great for creating a description that contains the you know the date, the location, and people in your photos, and taking that story and then creating a bunch of other metadata from it. But there are some cases where you might want to directly add metadata into some images that may already have some metadata in them. So let's take a look at these images here. Now they already have a tags for the people that are in there. It's got a description. Um, but there's some information that's missing, specifically the date and the location isn't really exact. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select these four images and I, I'm going to start by giving it a better location. So this was taken in Almaden Plaza in San Jose. So I'm going to type that in and look for it and it's going to show up right in the, the plaza. So that looks good. I'm going to hit the apply button and that will fill in my metadata. The other thing I'm missing is a date. And I don't know the exact date that this was taken, but I think it was in the spring of 1974. And as soon as I do that, I'm going to hit return and then chroma tag will give me actually a real date. So this information looks good. And now I'm just going to hit save and that will get written into the file and all of that information now is a little bit more complete. So last thing I want to cover is how to add people names into images that already have some metadata in them. So here's a photo that has a description, it's got location information, it's got a date. Uh, this is my wife's great aunt and we didn't know her name at the time. And so I can very easily add this information by clicking into here and going into keywords and then starting to type her name, which is Betty Williams. And I can just click enter after typing just a few characters. And the reason I can do that is the autofill works based on the names that I've imported before. So my contact names and any other names. Now, I'm, if I want to add a name that I haven't already imported, I can still do that. I just have to type in the full thing. So if I want to type in, you know, David Smith, uh, I can add that full name and then hit enter. I don't get the benefit of autofill, but I still can put that name in. I can also type in any other keyword that I want to add into this keyword field. So I can type in, you know, horses and then hit enter. Uh, I can type in park. So anything that might help me find this image later by using a keyword, I can enter directly that way. So there's a rundown on how to use Chroma Tag. I hope you use it to put lots of great metadata in your photos. But where do you go if you need help or if you just want to send us some feedback? Well, here under the Help menu, there's a menu item called Send Feedback. And it'll open up this window that'll allow you to report a bug or send us feedback. Basically, just type in your, your name and your email address here along with your message. You can even attach a file with it and then hit send feedback and that form will come to us and we'll be able to respond to you that way. You can also go to our website and on our website if you click on support and then pick the Chrome Attack for Mac product, there's a support section here where you can fill out a form with your name, email address, a subject and describing what problem you might have and then submitting that to us and that will open up a support ticket and we'll get back to you within a day and help you with whatever issue you might have.